Two guys on the U.S. Ryder Cup team are questionable picks. Sam Burns, Ricky Fowler. We look at it this way. If you were headed out to your local track this weekend for a big money game, a four ball, who do you want as your partner? Sam Burns or Bryson DeChambeau? Ricky Fowler or Dustin Johnson? When you put it that way, it doesn't even sound like much of a choice. Let's go look at the numbers. And these are all 2023 numbers that we're going to look at. And what, what jumps out here? Sam Burns is a bit of a puzzle. Yes, he's a good putter. Strokes gained putting, the first stat there. Ninth, very good, very good. But the rest of his game, yeah, uh, puzzle. 156th in greens and regulation. 173rd in proximity to the pin. Oh, maybe he's a good chipper. No, no, average, average chipper. Uh, you know, nothing, he can hit it far off the tee. He's 27th in total driving, or in total driving distance, all drives. But that, you know, and the putting. Okay. And then you look over at uh, Ricky. Well, he's just sort of Ricky. He, he doesn't hit it as far as he used to. He used to be reasonably reasonable off the tee, but now he's just middle of the pack. Um, always been a pretty decent putter at times, even better than that. And this year, sort of, I'd say about like usual. Um, strokes game putting 46th. So what? where is Ricky knocking the cover off the thing? No, nowhere. Nowhere. Um, you know, he, he's pretty solid around the greens with chipping, scrambling 54th. It doesn't really speak to that. He's a little bit better than that. Uh, but stats are stats, and it's interesting that he and Burns are sort of similar in that department this year statistically. Um, but it's the drives that are getting them in trouble. And here's where Ricky does have a big advantage over over Burns, um, in that Ricky's uh, uh, strokes gained approach is seventh. Okay, and let me get the mouse over here, right in here. So this number, let's go back. This number right here, the strokes gained approach, seventh. That's obviously very good. Top 10 in strokes gained approach, which is all your shots into the greens, including par threes. Now, what's what's interesting, you go a little deeper, which we have, uh, and Ricky's getting up there into the top 10 because of his play on par threes. He has been very strong this year on par threes, not nearly as strong on par, par fours par four, excuse me, and fives. What's that tell you? His driving is still not helping him. His driving is not terribly deep, and it's not very accurate. So, you know, 93rd in driving accuracy and driving distance 68th. So he's, he's not doing himself a whole lot of favors off the tee, and that's showing up in the par fours and fives, his procs. But the par threes, his iron game has been pretty solid. Well, very solid, actually, on the par threes. So Ricky is a little less of a puzzle than Burns. However, Sam was ranked 12th in the Ryder Cup points and Ricky 13th. But so when they when you look at them compared to each other, you know, sure, let's go back to our uh, our paradigm. You're you're going to your local track this weekend and you need a partner and you want to win. I mean, there's big money on the line here and if you don't win, you got to come out of pocket. So let's let's say you're playing for 5, 10 grand, you know, a really painful number if you lose it for most of us. Um, who do you want? You want Fowler or you want Burns? Now you got to factor in the course and your game, naturally. Um, but it's 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 better ball, so it's not a it's not alternate shot. It's better ball. So who do you need here? You know who do you want? Uh, you know, not obvious. It, neither is really what jumps out. Uh, so when we put it into that paradigm, it's just interesting that wow. You know, I if I had a choice. Wouldn't I want these guys? <laughs> Wouldn't I want DJ or Bryson? So let's look at that. And we don't have nearly the shot link data on uh, Dustin and Bryson because they're not playing the PGA Tour. And uh, Liv doesn't have shot link out there uh, yet. Uh, too bad. But look at these numbers on, on the majors. So head to head. All right, great. This is what is probably the most interesting thing. So you have... Take all that in, 
who played the best this year in the majors of these four guys? Well, you'd have to say DeChambeau. DeChambeau played the best. And who played the next best? Well, a little more of an argument here. You, you might be tempted to say Fowler with a T5, but we wouldn't. Because in this very same tournament, you have DJ with a T T10. So, yeah. Okay, Dustin gets... Let's look at it head-to-head. So, we're saying in our uh, in our intro, you know, Fowler... Do you want Fowler or do you want DJ as your partner? All right. Uh, we go with DJ, hands down. Hands down. He's, he's playing good. He hits it a lot farther. He's a good putter. He's good with the irons. He's good with the approach. He's solid across the bag. He just needs to turn it on when he wants to. And when he wants to turn it on, he does. Um, and that'll show up in the next uh, image that we put up here. But let's look now at Sam versus Bryson. Well, this even becomes a little bit more you know, uh, humorous. Um, you know, Good for Sam for getting invited to the Masters. Great. Uh, then not much after that. T32 with the US Open, you know, for a for a guy that's going to the Ryder Cup, that's nothing special. For the rest of us, of course, that's terrific. But, you know, not for that group. So, you know, how'd you do in the majors this year when he's hanging around those other guys at the Ryder Cup? It, well, you know, I didn't do anything in the majors this year. Uh, meanwhile, DeChambeau has a, a tie four, a T4, and a top 20. Um, and did only miss the cut in the Masters, which has been his nemesis. Um, so he's and he's trending, right? So the the Masters being his worst event, he's trending. Not true for anybody else on this board, uh, which kind of leads to the next bit of data. Who's really got the biggest? I don't know. Argument, let's just say. I don't want to use the other word, the gripe word. Um, who's got the best case for? To belonging on the Ryder Cup team for the Americans. Well, Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, he's the only guy of these four that has won twice this year and recently. So he's in form now, which is what you want. Now, the course over in Rome at Marco Simone, rumors have it, uh, and you would think, uh, being a thinking man in this audience, that the Euros will set it up with rough because that worked out pretty well in Paris worked out really well in Paris and the Euros as we well actually we didn't put that on YouTube but as we said this week the Euros have uh, the intangibles working for them in a big way because they got crushed at uh, Whistling Straits they got their rear ends handed to them they were humiliated the worst defeat I believe in Ryder Cup history um, with uh, 19 to 9 I believe was the outcome there and they're ready I mean they want it back we're back on home soil we're going to we're going to stick it to you. So we'll, they'll set the course up. They would anyway, but they'll set it up so that it's, they have every possible advantage. So if you're not driving it in the fairway, you got a problem. And then if, unless you're deep off the tee and in the rough, which DeChambeau is very capable of doing and gouging it out with a sand wedge, you know, it's a huge, he can do that. And he and Rory, you know, there's only a handful of guys, DJ, can hit it that far and still recover from the rough because they have such a short iron. I mean, hitting eight, nine iron, certainly the wedges versus a six iron for these other guys is, you know, there's no comparison there. A six iron is going to get wrapped around the grass and a eight iron won't. Um, you can open up an eight iron or, and higher and you, it's much harder to do that with a, even a seven iron's borderline. Um, the modern sevens that are tilted even a little bit lower, de-lofted a little bit, even harder. So, you know, what does that say? It says that DeChambeau should be there. I think he, and he's been, he's been out there saying that, but he's been rather diplomatic about it and rightfully so. I don't think you want to, you know, shoot all your ammunition in one shot, but uh, in, in they're all coming together, obviously, after Nuco takes over. Um, so don't do that, but make it clear that, you know, hey, you know, I, I could have been there. I should have been there. And, you know, had he, had Liv been recognized by the Ryder Cup system, he would be there. You know, I, I think that's pretty obvious. If he had another top, you know, let's go back. Um, if he had another top 10 in a major, so if that U.S. Open had been a top 10, uh, let's say he finished T8 or something in the U.S. Open, then he'd even have more of a case. Uh, so good for him. And this leads to sort of our last point here, which is pressure. So the Ryder Cup is 
as much pressure as you're going to face or close to it. Uh, depends on the player, probably. But I, for most players, it'll be the most you're going to face because it's not only you. It's your you do you could be blowing it for the whole team, uh, and that's phenomenal pressure. So, who's going to hold up under pressure? Well, of these four guys, the guys that have shown that they can do that, and who has proven they can do that, the guys that have won majors. That would be Mr. Johnson with two wins, U.S. Open and the Masters, and Bryson DeChambeau with the U.S. Open. Fowler, famously now, has not won a major, um, and he hasn't really really won either. Let's remind you of that. He, you know, Fowler has won in his career. Uh, let me get the number six times. I want to say. Uh, I will tell you though, six times. He's got six wins in his whole career. Okay, and Sam Burns, to his credit, five wins in a much shorter career to date. But neither one of those guys. Now Ricky's had, a, a you know, a exemplary record, not lately, in the majors with top tens, top fives, you know, second places, um, which you know, hats off. We don't want to not say that, but he hasn't won. And you know, at the end of the day, you got to do that. Uh, Sam Burns, on the other hand, has no record in the majors. Uh, he hasn't done anything. I mean, nothing. Um, mostly missed the cuts. Hasn't played in that many. Still young career, okay, granted. But, you know, anymore, these players get off to fast starts. So uh, Sam's not 22 either. Uh, he's 27, still a young guy, but he's not just out of college. Um, but we wish him well. But to date, neither he has not shown anything in the majors under that kind of pressure. Uh, Ricky, you would argue at this point, has shown that he doesn't hold up well under pressure. Um, and this thing at the Ryder Cup is going to be pressure packed. So uh, that gives just another definitive nod to DJ and Bryson. All right. So why are they there then? Let's wrap it on that. Um, we sort of made these points in our two videos on Brooks, Kepka, and uh, you know how we blew that prediction. Um Although I really like a lot of that analysis, most of that analysis, but it's it's the it's the friendship factor. So Zach actually said it. If you unpack it, going, looking backwards, uh, Zach Johnson said, you know, the the role of the six captains' picks is to complement the six automatic qualifiers. In his view, I suppose, uh, maybe that's a widely held view. Don't know, but that's what Zach said. So and that's the team he put on the field. So he was being very transparent there. He could have been a little clearer about that, but. Sam Burns is on the team because Scotty Scheffler wanted him on the team, period. As there's no other reason to have him there over the other choices that were available, uh, including guys on the PGA Tour like Cam Young, uh, uh, for sure, um, and some other choices there, Keegan Bradley. Um, but why Ricky Fowler? Well, same reason. He's tight with Spieth and JT and well-liked by the media, and well-liked by everybody else, and including us. I mean, who doesn't like Ricky Fowler? He's a great guy to have around, um, and, and a fun guy to have in Rome. And that's worth something. I mean, that's worth something in the locker room. But at the end of the day, you got to go play golf. So we'll see how these two guys perform. Uh, but if we're up to us at our uh, weekend track playing a big money game, it wouldn't be wouldn't be those two guys that we'd be picking. Uh, but uh, tune into the podcast tomorrow, and we'll go through who we would pick as individuals, myself and Darkstar, and why that would be.